Welcome to episode two of my italics series, where we focus on a person or a technology that I find to be extremely interesting. Today is no exception. We're going to be talking about Project Sphinx, which is a concept computer system that was designed by the Soviet Union in 1987. First off, let's see how we got here. Even though it started before this, where I'm going to pick up is Sputnik. Sputnik 1, 2, and 3, which were launched in 1957 and 1958, started the space race, the first time anything had ever exited the atmosphere of the Earth, and this was a big moment. Now, the Soviets were very focused on one big concept, which was the idea that unity could be created through technology. And so for the most part, when they were developing this technology, they were focused on commercial, they were focused on military. These were things that were being created for the common good of all, not necessarily for an individual person. Now, part of the Soviet Union, the State Council for Science and Technology, realized that they were lagging behind in the design department. They saw that other world leaders, other nations, were driving consumer technology forward. And so they started a group specifically for that focus. Enter v -Night. It's the All-Union Scientific Research Institute of Industrial Design. And they were tasked with closing the gap from Western nations and the Soviet Union. Now, from what I can tell, most of v Knight's work remained in the conceptual phase. They typically tried to drive design standards forward, but they weren't involved on the manufacturing level. They created the v Knight PT in 1963, which was a concept taxi that was meant to be the Soviet standard for taxis. From what I can tell, it didn't pick up past its concept phase, but the design here was very interesting, especially with the type of door that they had implemented here. And then later, pushing into the 80s, the Soviet Union designed a personal PC, a PC that was meant to be used inside of a home. They created the PC-1715, which was manufactured in East Germany, and this was one of the only PCs that was ever created out of the Soviet Union. And right around that time, v Knight released Project Sphinx. Project Sphinx was designed as a communication system, what the communication system of the future would look like, something that would replace every other existing technology in the household. In the Soviet Union magazine Technical Aesthetics from 1987, v Knight was quoted saying about Project Sphinx, it enables you to program your entire set of home electronics and other equipment through a central computer processor. It may also include a communication system, which is why it comes equipped with a phone handset. So the Project Sphinx devices were actually meant to consolidate different devices. Instead of having a cluttered room full of all different boxes for all sorts of things, this was meant to be a modular system. Families can use the system to establish friendly teleconferences or business meetings. Smaller displays will be better suited for individual activities, although they too can be used by two or three people at a time. A screen and speakers can be placed flat on a desk integrated into furniture, walls, hung on a wall or vertical furniture pieces. Variable angles of inclination are possible. The display can be used without speakers, as it has small built-in speakers. It is seamlessly integrated with the interface. A remote control with a wide scope of functionality, and thus can be used as the display of a personal computer for a scientist, writer, engineer, journalist, architect, student, etc and in his spare time can be used as a screen for viewing of TV shows or videos, slides, and so on. The new slim, flexible, easily scalable consumer electronic system will stop the intervention in the home environment of all kinds of boxes, tape recorders, television sets, video recorders, players, radio sets, watches, phones, slide projectors, and later even personal computers, electronic games, and so on. At the same time, it will also include an unlimited amount of new features. Interactive work functionality, control over the apartment, a help desk service, medical diagnostics. This is the intensive path of development of the consumer electronics. So the whole idea behind Project Sphinx was to unify a household, to bring technology into a consumer's home, and then actually consolidate all of the varieties of technology. So the main core of this system was this triangular modular memory system. You could implement different modules that would have different abilities and capabilities. 
So each person in the family could essentially have different user profiles and different programs that they could bring into the system whenever they needed it. In the original article, they even talk about how the screens would be LCD or some sort of plasma powered. The future is very clearly readable in these concepts. As most of the designs that V-Knight actually released, they were very minimalist and they were very Soviet styled. A lot of simple geometric forms, spheres and rectangles and triangles. And of course the functionality here was to prioritize simplicity and functionality. So after all of this, why do I think this is so interesting? Well, honestly, it's mostly because of how old this technology is and how spot on the designs are. If you watch old episodes of Star Trek or any sort of science fiction type content, you can see references to things that clearly exist today, something like a cell phone or an iPad, things that we as humans have imagined for decades now. Project Sphinx brings almost to life a concept that is so close to modern day reality, and it was created 40 to 50 years ago. But having those different profiles and having the different functionalities, combining everything into a single device is actually really close to the truth. Now, since this was really before the internet was around, they didn't have the concept of a cloud or an internet system, a home network that would be connected to something a little bit bigger than just the home. But today I have a Google Home device. I'm able to see something on my phone, hear something through my ears, able to pull something up on my computer, and all of these things are very, very clearly connected. So as I move forward, one of the things that I'm eagerly looking for is people that are brainstorming about concepts today. It's one of the things I'm working on, and it's one of the things that I look for in other people. When you're guessing something, and when you're estimating what the future will look like, it's easy to get things wrong, but to be honest, we can kind of see the chain of events and where we're heading. We know augmented reality glasses will become a thing at some point in time. It's gonna take some time, but it will arrive. We don't know what format it will take yet, but we know that it's going to change the way we do things today, just like these Soviet era designers knew this type of content, this type of device would change the world that we live in. Now, here in the 21st century. So one of the main designers of V-Night, Dmitry Azarkin, is actually still a designer today. He lives in Canada and he has a design agency, or at least he does designs on his own. I actually happened across his LinkedIn profile and I thought it was so interesting to see someone who designed something so long ago and is relatively not well known to be so clearly spot on about where the future was going. In most people's books, Project Sphinx isn't even on the radar. For a couple people that recognize it, they say, wow, what a great design, but it was a total flop. But there are a very select few, I hope you're included in that, that say this design had a vision for the future well before the future existed. I find that exciting, and I'm excited to see what we can find next. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of Italics. If you've enjoyed, subscribe, stick around and watch my other series. And as always, I'll see you next time.